Let's then start talking about WPF. Right? So this is a 3.0 technology, Windows Presentation Foundation. I think we've all been around a long little welcome screen where they have a couple of different samples. Right? Oh, and by the way, uh, there was early confusion. Um, originally, the Blend product was not going to be part of an MSDN license, but now it is. So you should all be able to get this back at your place of work. Okay? Let me just kind of show you a couple of demos that really get that whole point across about going to the next level, right? beyond the menu, the status bar, the grid. And I'm going to start with, um, we'll go for the 3D viewer application. Remember, these are the samples that are part of Blend. Yeah, not Blend, but the... the, the <laughs> <laughs> well, Blend is an open source, but... <laughs> Yeah, they certainly do. In fact, uh, as Sal will show you in more detail later, you can just look at all the C Sharp code and all the XAML code right here. So like here would be the XAML describing that page. And that really kind of gets the point across about how you're going to want to use a tool to generate your XAML. So let's just take a look at this here. <laughs> right? So you can already imagine the amount of horrible hand cramps you might have to go through to make this happen. But let me just run the program to show you what this looks like. I, I'm kind of stuck at a really bad resolution. So I'm not sure how well I can make this work here. But notice what I can do. Right? Here's just a little application. Notice when I like, put the mouse over one of these little buttons, I get the fancy, sexy looking, spinning call out. Even cooler, if I click on one of these things, we're going to get real time animations, right? where I can now view my text. This is just a text block. Right? Just at a skewed angle. I could go back over here and look at the engine. Right? And again, this is just a little example. It doesn't do anything. It's just showing you, hey, look, this whole idea of animation and scaling and skewing and twisting and transforming, all of this is being done through XAML. How do we manage to get your car? Exactly, yes, yes. <laughs> I think my wife would kill me if I got a motorcycle, so that won't ever happen. Let me show you another example, too, just to really kind of show some of the things that could be done. Let's take a look at photo book. And I'll run this, too. So again, a little, little tight in the screen real estate. So in this example here, looks like your basic photo book. but to get this idea of what can be done in XAML, check out how I can like flip between the pages of my photo album here. Right? Check this out. And this is all being done through markup. Okay? So hopefully this small, quick little example has kind of shown you, oh yeah. So XAML's a good thing, right? Because again, using a tool like Blend and having a skilled designer that gets design, unlike myself, they can do this. And again, using all these integrated tools of Blend, they don't have to care about the XAML. They just use these tools to drag and drop stuff and perform animation sequences. The tool generates all the XAML in the background. right? And then I can just use that same project to bring it right over to Visual Studio and hook up all the event handlers, for example. Make sense? Again, Sal will talk more about Blend in his presentation on Silverlight. Just wanted to kind of show you that real ooh-ah effect. I think I'll just do one final one here. This guy's kind of interesting too. I'll do this one, Animation Studio. So this is a WPF program which allows you to build animations for a WPF program. <laughs> of course, there's already you know, built-in support to do this very kind of thing with Blend. So let's say that we're going to draw something really pretty. You know, here's my approach. <laughs> the walking man, <laughs> right? And again, I can't really get the whole screen real estate, but down below here, there are other options for me to like, you know, change pencils. Oh, isn't that nice? 
and I can go ahead and add new slides, you know, add new um, pieces to my animation. Then when I click the play button, it would actually just go ahead and walk through each piece of my animation. I just can't seem to get to it because it's below my screen. <laughs> so this is what a tool like Blend is used for, right? To really build up this rich user interface experience, decoupling the functionality of that experience, right? Because all Blend cares about is design. Visual Studio cares about functionality. Well, there's another tool for that. There's another version of the expression family just for web programming. Yep. And there are other ones too, right? If you just go to like microsoft.com slash expression, I think that's the URL, you'd find that there's another one for doing 3D modeling, right? So if you have to do some really intricate 3D modeling, they have one for that. All right, they also have a media manager. We'll be looking at that thing. Okay, great. So yeah, I think I'll, I'll let Sal go through that stuff. Now again, this is not to say that you could not use WPF to build the same kind of thing you would build with Windows Forms. You certainly can. And truth be told, that's really the easiest way to do things for a Visual Studio project, right? You know, you're not going to want to use Visual Studio to author all that XAML that we just looked at. Is there's just not that kind of support, okay? So when you're using WPF to kind of build your traditional business app, what are the benefits there? Well, you still have a nice unified object model, right? You still have this ability for, to get themes and styles, because that's not to say every application has to look like what we just saw, right? But it just kind of shows you the potential of what you could do. And this is another piece I'd like to bring up too. WPF kind of reminds me of what you see in the movies, you know? Whenever you see any kind of a spy thriller or any kind of a movie that has a computer, it always looks so amazing, right? You know, 3D spinning email messages, <laughs> holographic images. Well, maybe not the holographic part, but that's the kind of stuff we can do in WPF, right? And I also like to point out the following piece too. Windows Forms isn't gonna go away anytime soon. Many, many applications can be built directly and simply with Windows Forms. So it's not to say that WPF is just gonna crush WinForms and we're not gonna see it anymore. That's not going to be the case. And in some cases, all of these extra bells and whistles and supercharged features, if your app just doesn't need it, you might not need to bother with it. Because the other part to remember too is that all of these extra special supercharged features require a semi-capable supercharged computer, right? So if you build up some crazy 3D animations for every time you click a button and your end users run on a pretty slow machine, <laughs> he or she might not be the happiest camper, <laughs> okay? So testing is always a good idea. Yeah? Is there any uh, support for kind of a, a dual mode display? Let's say somebody's running on an old machine, being able to show them the 2D, uh, the, the two-dimensional 3D graphic versus the one where you can grab and rotate? There's no baked-in piece. You could do a runtime check to figure out their machine characteristics and act accordingly. Maybe load up other modules on the fly. You know? But no, I haven't seen anything of you, Sal. No, I, I know Vista has built-in capability depending on the power yeah. of the unit to, to scale down. Right. But I'm not familiar with anything in WPF that automatically would yeah. detect that. I don't think so. Right. Can you define an object and say, here's behavior one, here's behavior two? Certainly. Seven. Yep, absolutely. Yep. I had another point that I just forgot. Must be showing my age. Uh, maybe it'll come back to me. Okay, so that kind of sets the stage as to what WPF is bringing to the table, right? Let's talk about the different flavors of a WPF app. because This is also going to be a little different than what we have today under WinForms. The first thing you could do with WPF is to build a traditional desktop executable program, right? Just like you would do for Windows Forms. When you're building an application in that vein, you will be worried about two fundamental types window and application.